Hi, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our ACCA webinar on SPL for March 2022 attempt. My name is Sir Hassan Dosani, and how are you guys doing tonight? If you can see me and hear me clearly, please can you type yes in the question box? Very good. Good to see you guys. Excellent. <clears throat> Thank you, Maham. So uh, while we are waiting for some other students to join, please can I request you that you have your question paper ready with you? This is TT for you march 2020 attempt and your blank workspace the one which we were using yesterday so we'll just wait for two more minutes to give a little benefit of doubt So uh, tell me, while we are waiting, how many of you uh, practiced uh, yourself the one which we did yesterday? So we did question number 1A and 1B yesterday. So did you guys uh, did some practice on your own? Very good, Maham. Yes, Zarif, I can see your comments, but I where is your question? I don't see your question. Zarif is saying hello. Yes, I can see you, boy. Yes, so I just want to remind all of you hmm, that this question TT for you is uh, is in fact the most difficult question of your SBL exams, right? So number one, you guys were doing the techniques for the first time yesterday. Number two, this question is in itself is one of the most difficult papers. So obviously on the first day, it will cause you some problem, but do not uh reduce your confidence and the, the more we'll do the more uh hang you'll get of it all right so just keep in mind this is one of the most difficult paper so even if you are understanding 50 percent that's pretty good you got me this is one of those questions which i never encourage students to do on their own Right, so you can understand the level of difficulty. So it's all right. I mean, if you if just you need to understand the approach and probably 50% of what's going on. Does it make sense? Uh, I can see Amanullah your comments. Uh, yeah, yeah, just I can see all the comments. Okay, so let us start now. Huh? Right, so again, a huge welcome to all of you on our day three webinar. And uh, that's a little bit of my introduction for students who are joining us tonight for the first time. My name is Hassan Dosani, and I have been teaching for the last 20 years, and this is my seventh SBL webinar. And that is my WhatsApp number in case you want to get in touch with me. I also manage a SBL WhatsApp group globally. So if you want to be added to that group, please uh, send a request on this WhatsApp number and we will send you the link to this global group. Even I request the admin of this webinar to share the link every 15 minutes on the, on the question answer box 
that you can also directly join from there. How to ask questions? You can type your questions in the question box and uh, I occasionally stop and look at the question box, but make sure that your question should relate to the slides or topic under discussion. Any general question, I would be happy to answer in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, the paper which we uh, are doing is March 2020. It is called TT for you. And these were the topics. So yesterday we talked about this one. Analyze main risks. Remember yesterday? So we talked about strategic risks and operational risks and technological risks, uh, intellectual risks, reputational, all those things. Then the second question we did yesterday was to evaluate the two options. And uh, it was pretty straightforward, the pros and cons of the options. Today, we will attempt question number 1C and full question number 3 today. Okay, 1C, which is remaining from yesterday, and question number 3. Since you are a fresh mind, I would like to start with question number 3. And then if time permits, we will then move to question number 1C. Question 3 is, is most difficult of this paper. Question 1C is easy. So I want to start with the difficult thing because we are fresh right now. So let's uh, go to question number three. Let me go down here. So let's read the question. Question number three here. So remember, every question has how many components? There are three components. One is the, uh, the background, then the technical requirement, and followed by professional skills. Again, the background, the technical requirement, and the professional skills. So let's read the background here. The chief executive officer believes that TT4U's current structure will have to change if TT4U is to introduce the new myobed approach to client relationship successfully. Okay, there is some new myobed approach. If they want to implement that, then they will need to amend the current structure, right? The chief executive officer knows that she must take ownership of the transformation obviously she is the head of the organization she needs to lead all major changes affecting the entire organization she feels however that she needs guidance on the transformation process and how she should lead this process, including communicating the need for change to employees. So she needs some help, some guidance from us. So we are external consultant and she wants to, you know, seek some help from us, required. Prepare an email for the CEO, which advises her on the responsibilities and activities involved in preparing for and implementing the transformation of TT for you effectively. Advises her on responsibilities, that's one bit, and activities required to implement that. Okay. 10 marks. Interestingly, there is no professional marks for part a you see there's no professional marks mentioned here this professional marks is for part b okay so part a does not have any professional marks it happens sometimes but not usual but sometimes it happens 
So we have to advise her on the responsibilities and activities involved in preparing and implementing the transformation. Prepare a letter to all employees, which will be signed by CEO, explaining the benefits of the MyoBed approach for TT4U and its employees, and the main changes to team structures and behaviors below the board level which the new MyoBed approach will require. Professional marks are available for demonstrating. Communication skills, so your language, your tone, your role. In persuading employees of, of the benefits for adopting the new approach. Okay, straightforward. So, the third thing is the chairman wants the board to be briefed on aspects of corporate governance which need to change if the new MyoBed approach is to be introduced. Prepare briefing notes which advises the board on the changes required to the membership of the board and the information supplied to the board. Professional marks are available for demonstrating commercial acumen skill in identifying changes to the membership of the board and the information supplied, which are realistic for TT for you and will generate better relationships. Okay, so we just identify the changes to the board and we will score this. So this is the most difficult question. So you see this word myobed approach, myobed approach, myobed approach. A lot of students asked me, sir, what is this myobed approach? Which model is this? We have not studied this model. Oh my God, how will I do this question? Boys and girls. There is no such thing called MyoBed approach. There is no model called MyoBed approach. This MyoBed approach is an imaginary model created by the examiner for this paper. You can call it Angelina Jolie approach. You can call it Jackie Chan approach. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you see, so the, what the examiner, so forget about the fact that you have not studied the syllabus. Even I don't know what this myobed approach is. Something to do with bed, double bed, single bed, I don't know, my bed. So don't sweat about these things. What the examiner wants to see is whether you are getting confused or you are able to talk logical general stuff. Is this clear? Right. So first of all, prepare an email for the CEO which advises her on the responsibilities and activities involved in preparing and implementing the transformation. Let's go to our workspace. We have our workspace somewhere. Yeah. Remember this we were we did. Let's go down to question number three. And let's see what information we have gathered from the scenario. OK. So I would like to read these points so that you know I can recall the points. So these are some points which we gathered from yesterday's reading. TT for you CEO believes. No, sorry, three A. Yeah. TT for you CEO believes that TT for you needs to undergo an internal transformation in order to be able to retain 
current clients and deliver the expansion required to obtain a full listing. She believes that the company's current structures are now insufficient to respond quickly to the changes in the external environment and meet clients' evolving demands. So do you think this is kind of an advantage that we are able to retain clients and deliver the expansion? That this is an advantage of Myobed that we, you know, if we apply Myobed, we will be able to retain clients and deliver the expansions like we will be able to grow. And she also believes that our current structures are insufficient to respond quickly. So if we adopt Myobet, maybe we are able to respond quickly. So do, can we turn this paragraph, reword it so that it sounds like the advantages? Is it possible? Yes, no? Okay, so guys who have joined late, we are doing a full-fledged case study called tt for You. You can download that paper from ACCA's website, March 2020 attempt. Right, so this is this paragraph is more of an advantages. Are we supposed to talk about advantages somewhere? I think 3B talks about the benefits of implementing. So I will use this paragraph under the benefits. What about this one? Recent client survey, I'm very much regret that we haven't carried out a survey like this for some time. For me, it highlights the need to transform our business to bring our clients much closer to us. Again, one of the advantage. Right, right. So I'll just use them as, so now you have to talk about prepare an email which advises her on the responsibilities. Right, so this myobed approach looks pretty serious, right? The CEO feels that if we want to grow, if we want to be more responsive to blah, 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 if we want our customers to come more closer to us, we have to implement this. So does it sound serious or does it is it a casual move? What do you think? It's a company-wide serious thing, right? Yeah. So you think the anything which is major, which affects most part of the organizations who should lead it anything which is major and affects the almost the entire organization who should be the right person to lead it the ceo right and maybe the board of directors and the ceo together so yeah the chairman basically the chairman in this case is a non-executive person a non-executive director is someone who doesn't get salaries right so we should not expect uh, but executive director the board in general the ceo most so don't you think it should be the responsibility of the ceo to lead this simply because a it's a major thing B, it affects all parts of the organizations, the employees, the customers, and the clients, right? So would you be able to draft one or two small paragraphs explaining to the CEO about her responsibility? Okay, so that's one bit of the requirement, which advises her on the responsibilities and activities involved in preparing so now she also needs us to advise her how what steps she should take or what steps are needed for her to implement this change or transformation in her business so guys, let's do some brainstorming. Let me know. 
what steps you think uh, should be needed if you are the CEO and you need to implement yeah I think it's a little bit general but we will try to link it with the case but right now I'm just brains brainstorming with you guys so what steps would you take if you if you are the CEO and you need to implement something across the board what is the first thing you will do awareness okay I'm just reading your comment uh, communicate with the employees very good awareness of the benefits very good involve the employees inform the staff freeze unfreeze i know that's a model need to explain the benefit market research consultation discuss with the boards motivate the employees educate the staff how would you implement it like this is planning part how about training yeah then you need to first you communicate everybody is ready then you plan the implementation like a kind of a project management then we will train the employees and then uh, uh, then we will roll out and then we will monitor monitor that you know people are we will monitor the impact the changes slowly gradually we will change the culture we will lead from the top pilot run oh excellent so if I ask you this in general, you are all able to answer me. These are all common sense, general, logical points that if I if I am the CEO and if I want to implement Angelila Jolie approach, first I will analyze, I will first understand myself, I will plan, I will then involve the board, then we will try and communicate with the employees, we will uh, maybe hire a consultant to help us implement this, we will train the people, we will monitor. Yes, Kami. Kami is saying, because there is no stress, because there is no tension, we are able to think. Is that true, people? Do you agree with Kami? Kami is saying because you know right now we are relaxed, we are able to think logically. Absolutely, absolutely. But when you are under exam situation, stressed out, time pressure, and you see this kind of a thing, which which is called my own bad approach, my foot, you will just you understand so this sbl paper is basically a test of your of your nerves of how well can you think under pressure situation it is not a test of your syllabus or your concept it is a test of how you can think logically under a stressful situation do you think a CA4 must have this skill? You think a CA4 should be able to think logically under a stressful situation? This is why we get $20,000 a month. That's my salary. Why would anybody pay me $20,000 a month? Because we all have some wisdom and we are able to think under complex and stressful situations, right? So this is what you have to do as well. And the more you will practice, how will you learn this? The more you will practice, the more comfortable you will get. You might not get 100% good at it, but at least you will get more comfortable right so if supposing if we do this question properly and you remember all this discussion and in your march paper something similar comes don't you think you would be able to handle it at least 50 60 percent better right so whatever we practice try to memorize it 
so that you can always, if you face a similar question, you can always try and apply the same approach and learning. That's the purpose of uh, practice. Okay. The second thing, this so the, the one we, which we talked about that planning and communication and implementing and training, that is a general approach, common sense approach. There is one other approach we can you can also adopt. It is called change con it is a model called context of change. Okay. So change management is part of your syllabus. And the whole idea or the whole meaning of change management is this kind of a thing that if you are planning to bring implement something new what are the steps so context of change model is a model which tells us what are the steps which the change manager needs to do in order to successfully implement the change so this is change right she's trying to transformation she's trying to bring a new approach is trying to transform the company so it is change they did not use the word change but they use the word transform transform means change right you you can also apply the change model context of change model or you can also adopt the simple approach which we talked about so let me quickly explain to you this model and we'll see uh, how it works. So as per this model, there are several things which needs to be analyzed by the change manager. Who is the change manager in this case? It is the CEO who is taking the responsibility, right? So she is leading. She is the change manager. First thing she has to understand what is the scope of the change? Scope of the change means the size of the change. Okay, scope of the change simply means size of the change. Is it a small change or is it a big change? Right? Theoretically, a small change is easy to implement and a big change, the more bigger it gets, the more difficult it becomes. So small change, easy to implement. Significant change, difficult to implement, obviously. So scope of change. If it is a small change, it is called realignment. And if it is a big change, it is called transformation. So you see the word transformation, it is part of this model. And in this case, the CEO is calling it transformation. The requirement says transformation. So obviously she thinks it's a big change and I think she's right because it is basically affecting the entire organization. It is affecting the mindset, the culture, the business, the clients. It is a big change. So the first thing we need to talk about is scope of change. The second thing you need to know is the reason of the change that the CEO must be very clear why she is doing this change. What's the reason or what's the advantages? She needs to be very clear because any change, any transformation without having a convincing reason will flop. Reason has to be solid. Then the timing. Timing means the speed of the change. How soon or how slowly we want it. Sometimes the change can be urgent. It's overnight, it's you know immediate. And sometimes we have the time we can adopt, go slowly and gradually. So if you implement something immediately, it's called big bang. If you implement something slowly, gradually, it is called incremental. Any questions so far? Okay, so I'm just simplifying this model for you. 
Then we talk about capacity and resources. Capacity means does the organization has the required resources to implement this change, like human resource, financial resource, technology. The CEO, I think, needs to think about all this, right? Just saying we need to implement is not enough. Then she needs to understand what kind of expertise, resources, human resource, or financial resource, or whatever resources would be required to implement this change. She needs to arrange all those things. That's called capacity. Capability means does, has the organization implemented such change in the past or is it their first time? So what do you think? So, okay, let's apply this model in context of this scenario. So the scope of the change, what do you think is the scope of the, this change of myobed? Is it a small change or a big change? Please type your answer. Big change. Why do you think it's a big change? You have to uh, justify, right? Why you think it's a big change? Reason. Why you think it's a big change? Because it's affecting the entire organization, it's affecting the employees, it's affecting the customers, it's affecting the culture. Very good, very good. Simple, right? Very good. So it's transformation, done. Reason, can anybody tell me why, what should be the reason why the CEO is doing this? One or two high level reason, and I think we read the reasons, the benefit, uh, it will help us to grow, it will help us bring our clients more closer to me. We can pick up the reason from the case, right? For growth, for better client service, uh, you know the client survey was very bad for winning new contracts. Efficiency, Zarif, I did not see the word efficiency, but okay. You need to pick words from the exhibits. Okay, poor customer service, very good. Right, so reason two-liner. Timing. Do we need to do it overnight urgently or we can do it properly in a structured, incremental, step-by-step -step manner? What do you suggest? If you are the CEO, you will do urgently or incremental? Okay, so there is one person who said urgently, Manjima. Another person is saying, Lohit is saying urgently. Ikhlas is saying urgently. What's the urgency? Why do you want to do urgent? So remember, if, if the, the more urgent the change, the more difficult it gets. And if it's more slowly, gradually, it's easier and more controlled, right? Obviously, if we have to do something urgently, it becomes difficult. So what is the urgency here? Yeah, question box. By urgent, we mean overnight. Okay, so I don't think this is really urgent because we don't, we are not crashing, we are not dying. Yes, it is important, we have to do it, but should it be done next week? No, it's a big change. No need to cause panic, but at least we do it in the next three months. Okay, so whatever your argument, there is no one right answer. If you say it's urgent, then you explain that, you know, the competitors, we will soon lose markets. If you think it's incremented, you will say that it's not really urgent, but it should be do, done like incremental, but soon. Okay, I think you understand. Capacity, that's... You think the CEO needs to know what resources are required? I mean, I don't know. We need to understand uh, this model and whatever. And if there's any uh, technological or financial or human resource required, then the CEO needs to arrange all those, right? So it's a general point. Capability. 
Has the organization implemented such change in the past or is it the first time? Tell me, what do you think? Has the CEO implemented this in the past as well or is it her first time that she's implementing myobed approach? First time. So which one is better? Implementing first time or having experience from before? Yeah, obviously, if, if, we, if we have prior experience, that's good. But if you are doing it for the first time, then it's a slightly relatively difficult. So we'll tell her that, listen, this is for the first time you guys are implementing Myobet. You don't have any idea. You don't have any prior experience. So what do you suggest? What should she do now? Can she consult? Yeah, she can see a pointer consultant, maybe a person who can she train? Yeah, she can take some training herself. She can appoint or hire a consultant who is an expert. Very good, very good. That's it, no lengthy stories. Common sense points. Power. Power means that the change manager should have sufficient power and authority to implement the decisions. So in this case, who's the change manager? The CEO. So obviously, I think by uh, by virtue of her designation as CEO, she must carry the required power. So nothing to worry about in this case, right? She has the power because she is the CEO. That preservation. Preservation means trends from existing environments needs to be retained. That you know, if you are bringing something new and there are problems in the existing structure, that's fine. But there may be one or two good points in the existing structure. So make sure those are retained. So in this case, I don't know what the advantage, you know, so let's leave this out. Readiness. She has to make sure that all the employees are ready. Right? How can she make sure that all the employees are ready? Any idea? Survey? No. Communication? Active communication? Motivation? Training? Convincing? All these simple things to make sure that people are excited, they are looking forward to it. If people can see the advantages for them, they will grab this, right? And finally, resistance. So whatever you do, there will be few people who will always resist. You can't avoid that, right? So then she has to make sure she has to take care of people who are resisting. She has to, she cannot leave them unattended, right? Because then they will try to cause damage and demotivation to others. They will do bad mouthing. So people who are still resisting, she needs to monitor them. She needs to talk to them. She needs to warn them or whatever so that they don't cause trouble. So again, this is a very simple model which tells us some points that before implementing any change, we should think through, as a change manager, we should think through these points. So you have got two options for part A. Uh, but what is, the, can anybody remind me about the marks? What is the marks? Ah, how many points? Five points in which we have to talk about the responsibilities as well as the activity. So maybe one point on the responsibility, so four points on the activities. So either you can apply some points from this model, like some of the important points, just four points, or you can adopt a general approach of by saying that, you know, you analyze, you 
communicate, you train, you monitor, both is equally okay. Okay, any questions? Please, can you quickly, the, what's the format here? Uh, prepare an email for the chief executive which advises her on the responsibilities and activities. Please, can you quickly prepare the email format? I want to see. The format should be very good because there is communication skills generally. So prepare an email which advises her on the responsibility. Your time starts now. Do we know the name of the CEO? I don't think so. I'm done. Please compare your format with mine. Did you put this big heading in center called email? Then to CEO, I don't know whether we have the name or not. From our role is subfield consultant. Subject is transformation. Just a simple subject. Date is 8 March. Salutation, dear CEO. Opening sentence. This email, and then I copy paste it from here. Advises on the activities. And then, did you give this closure? Matched. Now, this sentence is entirely incorrect. I will lose marks here. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this? I just copy paste it from the requirement. So what the hell is wrong with this? Advises her is wrong. So what's, what's wrong in that? Yes. Yes, very smart. So these are small, small things which this email advises you on the responsibilities and activities involved in preparing and implementing the transformation of TT for you effect. This advises you because we are now addressing email to the CEO herself. So what so now the next heading is responsibilities and then followed by activity these are the two broad headings
So now can you draft like one paragraph explaining her responsibility? This is what we just discussed, right? Why do you think the CEO should be responsible for this? Why she should lead and not the CFO or the IT head? Some simple, plain English with some stupid logic. Can you guys read it? Anything technical? The transformation process is a major activity as it affects the entire organization. Also, it affects your clients and employees. Hence, something of this level should be led by the senior most person in the organization such as yourself and the board should support you in this respect alas any problem so we, we just talked about the responsibility that you know it should be your responsibility very good armor no at last you are saying we say that it is responsible of the ceo to run the company so that means that she should do everything no why she should do this because it's a major thing the only ceo gets involved in major things so you need to use the word major significant across the company can we write dear in email fatima oh, excuse me you are saying can we write dear in email why not who, who, who tells you all these things that you cannot write dear in email with? Come on. I even write, you know, I can show you my emails. This is my company's uh, laptop I'm using right now. I write, uh, you know, I write to my CEO like, hi, what's wrong in the back? Well, I don't show my company emails, so I'll close it out. So no problem, okay. Now activities. So either you can adopt the general approach that I would say that following key activities needs to be done in order to implement the Myobed approach. What do you think? Analyze, plan, communicate, train, implement, monitor. One, one, you know, give a heading, or you can just give small, small paragraphs, or you can adopt the model called scope, the reasoning, timing, capacity, capability.
timing. That's it, resources, uh, capacity, what should I write? Enough, I think. One more because I'm giving small point for readiness. Guys, if you are reading, you would agree that I am using simple language, not talking too much, giving basic guidance to the CEO that, okay, this, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. That's it. That's the whole approach of drafting. Small, small logical points, okay? For 10 marks, I think we've done enough one year and then we gave small, small five or six points. That's it. Questions, please. Okay, it's capability, not capacity. My mistake, I will uh, correct it. Amir. Unfreeze, change, refreeze. What, how would you explain this to the CEO? You need to talk in respect of this approach. You don't need to tell the model, right? So I'm explaining the steps, not the model. Is this enough for 10 marks? Maham, this is more than enough because for 10 marks, you have 18 minutes. So, you know, more than enough. I cannot show the simple way because it's uh, I have some time limitations. A simple way would be I just give you the headings, right? Analyze, plan, um, train, communicate, implement, monitor. These will be your heading and one liner explaining what you mean by analyze. Analyze means that you will you need to study the myobet approach and make sure that you understand it. Communicate means that you need to communicate the advantages to all the employees, why it is done, 
how it will be done, when it will be done. Training means that you have to give, make sure that all the employees are trained so that when it is implemented, they know what to do. Simple common sense, right? I think we have not referred to the a lot exhibit a lot. Yes, you are right. We have not referred to the exhibit. We just talked about by using company's name and some company's background because we didn't have so much information. Sometimes there are questions where there is not a lot of information, but you just talk general, but in context of that company, not theoretical. I'm talking logical points, but in context of that entity. Yes, Rahul, you are right. No, Monip, we are referring. What makes you think that we are not referring? Every paragraph I'm referring, it is for you, it's not urgent, it is for you, you need to identify myobed approach you need to train your employees this is not general my friend i'm linking with the scenario in the context okay hey where are you What happened with this a minute, guys? I don't see the question box. Yeah. All right, done. I think we spent a lot of time. It's already one hour. Hmm? Yes, SBL is not from book, my friend. Yes, you can do that, Tuba. All right, let's move on. Let's move to the difficult part. Let's read the question. In this question, part B is more difficult. This one. It is how many marks? 13 marks. Divide by two. How many points? Six to seven points between these two. So what do we want? It says we need to talk about the benefits of implementing the myobet approach for TT for you and its employees benefits and the main changes to the team structures and behaviors. Most difficult part myobit approach so let me look at what notes we have let me just finish this one all right so These are some of the advantages we had. So look, oh, there's an exhibit two, which we have to read. And then the, the approach, let me bring this uh, here uh, down. Oops. Okay, so what are the points we have? First one is TT for you believe that it needs to undergo an internal transformation in order to be able to retain clients and deliver expansion. This is one of the advantage. Able to retain clients and deliver expansion. Okay. Another advantage is that she believes that the company's current structure are now insufficient. Okay. Let's read the one. The approach is based on building open and sharing relationship with clients that help them create new sources of value for their business. This is a benefit for the clients. I should also be looking to how we operate as a board. 
three directors currently combined board. This is not leading to the board dot required. This is a model which we have started, but it may not be appropriate. I will also want to look at the way TT for you is structured as a whole. I think we ought to be much more of a matrix organization which should result in better communication and mutual learning. Interesting. We have to be a matrix organization. I don't know what that means, but. What about this? I know staffs are told not to sit at the same desk each day. But to sit at different desks next to the different people. However, we all know that the three teams. Three teams, what three teams? I think they have three teams, right? Small business teams, large business teams, and government work in the same areas. Is there separate from each? So that there are three teams, they don't talk to each other. That's what I understand. So they have three teams. They want them to change places, but every day the three teams they sit together in their own desk. So I think the three teams are not communicating or talking to each other. Client service remains problems. Our survey shows that the consultants who are responsive, who use business approaches of line, make sure they will have largest. Ah, this is the advantage. So advantage. So we've got some advantages here. One or two, two, three advantages. And we know something about the teams. This is what is required, right? The benefits and the main changes to the team structures. Let's read it. Let's read exhibit two before we start drafting exhibit two. Oh, it's a very small one. Summary of the Myobet client approach devised by Business Tomorrow magazine. Myobet means mission driven, interactive, empowering, open, boundaryless, ethical, data focused. Mission driven means driving strategy and attracting clients by a strong mission. Bullshit. Interactive means participation of clients, stakeholders, enhancing our organization and theirs. So our we need to interact more with our clients. Are we interacting with our clients? Any idea? What do you think? Are we responsive? Are we communicating? Are we replying to their emails and phone calls and take proactive yes no do you remember yesterday's survey yeah so i think uh, we are very bad survey uh, client feedback and the baddest thing was that uh, we are not responding let's look at the survey responsiveness most bad score is responsiveness. Emails never answered. <laughs> so this needs to change, right? So interactive means we have to be more interactive. Empowering, enabling clients to realize personal and organizational potential. We have to empower, open, building on the knowledge. Are we open? Are the teams open means that we communicate with each other, we are open, we share knowledge, we exchange ideas. So here we have three teams who are not talking to each other. So the teams are not open. Boundaryless, taking clients, stakeholders on a journey beyond to transform operations. I have no idea what this fancy stuff is. Ethical. Founding client stakeholder relationship on responsiveness, fairness, honesty, responsibility, and transparency. This is how we should treat our clients fair, responsive, honest, 
responsibility and transparency. Uh, guys, keep this in mind because we would need require this uh, somewhere else as well. Data focus, maintaining tight security of client data. Remember this as well, huh? last is. So this exhibit does not tell me anything, you know, uh, concrete. It just tell me what the Mayo bed stands for and one liner definition, mission driven, blah, blah, blah. So let's move to drafting. So what's the format required? First of all, let's look at the format. Question number three, prepare a letter Prepare a letter to all employees, which will be signed by the CEO. Talking about the benefits of MyObet for TT4U and its employees and the main changes to the themes and behaviors. Most difficult questions. So can you please prepare a letter right now? Letter to all employees. What should be a nice format? It's an internal letter. Let's start with date. Tell us. And what's the close? Second one is changes to the team. Closure. Okay, look at the format. You understand the format? The main heading is there in center letter, date, addresses TT for you employees. And then, you know, as a CEO, I'm writing, dear colleagues, subject my obed approach. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce you to the benefits of implementing the MyObet approach and the main 
uh, changes this is from the copy pasted from the requirements benefits main subheading changes to the team subheadings and closure any questions on the format Ahmed is saying, sir, on the right side, we have to write our details. Theoretically, yes, but this is an internal letter. So when you are writing to an external person, then on the right side, your name and address. But this is a CEO writing to our own employee. So there is no concept of address and this and that. That is why I had to slightly change the format. OK. Now, guys, help me design, identify three to four advantages. I can use this here. And this advantage, we can move it to the uh, what else is there? I'm just copy pasting the advantages, putting them uh, in the right place, and then we can draft. Done. So now we have got all the points together. Can we draft the advantages? Let's delete all these things. Help me draft some advantage. We are able to retain client and deliver the expansion required to open full listing. Okay, so the first advantage is we are able to retain clients and deliver the expansion. How can I add my own words to it? Only copy pasting is not enough, right? We need to add our own words, talk about the impact or benefit, explain why this is an advantage. How do you think this is, how do you think this is this is an advantage? You're able to retain current clients and deliver the expansion required to obtain full listing. Okay. I'm just using my own words. It's important that our company is able to retain current clients and also deliver and also acquire new clients in order to grow the business which is required to obtain full listing the mayo bet approach will help us achieve the growth 
now it's done. So I just edit it and added my own words. Now this sentence can we edit a bit, explain in our own words, add the you know why is it a benefit? This approach is based on building open and sharing relationship with clients that help them create new sources of value for their business. So, so if we uh, if we approach this, it will also help our clients to grow their business. If our clients prosper, they would like to stay with us or continue with us. And hence, uh, my overt approach will help us retain more clients. So when client stays with you because you are adding value to them, obviously they will continue with us. This means retain, retention. Okay, simple. And what about this? Our survey shows that consultants who are more responsive who use a business approach, blah, 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 are making the largest profit. Not our survey, market studies. A market survey shows that consultants who are more responsive are making the largest profits. My bet approach will definitely help us become more responsive to our clients. Can anybody tell me one advantage of all these to our employees? Because if you read the question, it says, uh, advantage for to TT for you and its employees. So I just want to put one advantage for the employees. Can you cook up something? Can you think of what the employees will benefit from all this? The common sense, think like a CFO. Yes, it is general Baba. It is the most difficult question of this. How, how tell me the employees will benefit? Can you think of any advantage for the employees? Will they learn something new? If I want, if I'm the CEO, if you are the CEO and you want to convince all these people, Number one, there are advantages to the organization, but what is in there for them? It will be a growth, a learning from, for them. Start with the learning. Growth is secondary, right? We will say that, you know, this is a new approach and uh, it will be a new learning for you. It will be a new style of working and you know you it will make you grow and develop you into a, a better professional personal and professional growth empower employees okay more fit employees will become more fit competent yes all of you are right just give one logical advantage and you are done Rewards? No, please don't talk about rewards. You're talking like an accountant now. Reward is later on. But right now, you need to talk about the advantages to them. Are you giving them more money to adopt it? Career advancement. Okay, so that's, we just type. Uh,
Alas, I don't like lengthy stories for at least for the paper, right? So because the question wanted me to talk about advantage to employees as well, so I, you know, deliberately made sure because these three advantages were to the company. So I need to, I wanted to put one. This is this is why you know reading the requirement is very important that you don't miss out on the smaller, smaller requirements. Now you have put one point for employees, examiner is satisfied. What about this? Honestly, I have no understanding changes to the team. So I need your help here to draft something and I want to get out of it. This is one of those questions where you don't want to get stuck. You want to get out, right? So that's, I will just use some wordings from the scenario and put in my own little bit of wording. So I'm just saying that the changes, the current structures are now insufficient. What needs to be done? I think we should try and become a matrix organization which should improve our communication and mutual learning any better word mutual learning and collective learning okay we all know that the three teams sit the same area each day separate from each other i think this is we can bring it here okay we have internet but the lack of contribution of staff is staff from staff is very less we should be communicating contributing more frequently on company intranet so that we can share knowledge and experience. Kalas, I honestly don't Okay, I know, I know, I'm just joking. But if I put myself in your shoes under exam conditions, you will not know what to do. So I just told you that in this type of a question, you just tweak the wordings from the uh, scenarios and get out of it. Your objective is to run away. But instead of keeping it blank or writing fancy imaginary stories, just stick with the facts from the exhibits, change it a bit, add one small comment here and there and move out. Do you understand? So I did this question with the approach of winding up, not getting stuck, but getting rid of it some basic advantage from the scenario and just using the words like matrix structure i don't know what a matrix structure is i know but you don't know but anyways you just use this word uh tell us got it questions
Why are we writing V in the answer, Ali Ahmed? I will shoot you. I think today is your first class. So Ali is asking, why are we writing V in the answer? How will you pass SBL, Ali, my friend? This letter is addressed to the employees. And who is it being from? CEO. We both are internal persons. Please, huh? you need to be more intelligent than this. Yes. Yes, Sunir, you are right. Ali, I know. <laughs> I understood. Anyway, so did you understand that in uh, yeah, role has changed because yeah, uh, that in a difficult question, in a difficult question, your objective should be get out of it, not get stuck in it. And the way to get out of it, if you remember my first day, that what to do if the answer is unknown, that you, you can define or you can search find, but in this case, we had certain sentences from the exhibit. So I just edited those sentences. Wherever I, add, I can understand, I added little points and class. So it's a 13 marks question. Even if I get five marks or six marks, I'm happy because it was a trap it was a difficult question yeah yeah of course there's a break now so you go you guys understood this was the most difficult question of this so please my obed approach my foot there's no model called my forget about models all this was just common sense you need to be a good talker a good salesman just to get rid of sbl Okay, so very good, very good. Eh, who will do this? You need a break now? Or you want to do 3C and then take a break? Let's take a break, then we will do 3C and then we will do 1C. Okay, two. So we do two parts, we did two parts now and two parts after the break, okay? Done. So 15 minute breaks, it is 10 o'clock in Pakistan. So 10, two, 10, 15 p.m. break. Time starts now.
Maybe. Hi guys, are you back? Shall we shall we start? Okay. It looks good to me. Short letter. Hmm? So today we did uh, email about transformation, responsibilities, activities, and then we did a letter talking about myobet approach, benefits, and changes to the team. Now let's read 3C directly from the scenario. Prepare briefing notes which advises the board on the changes required to the membership of the board and the information supplied to the board. Commercial acumen in identifying changes to the board and blah, 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 okay. Changes required to the membership of the board. Let's look at our referencing. So we had said earlier that we need to uh, let me remove this. We had said earlier that we need to refer to the introduction for current board structure. OK, we will look into that. And then we found these sentences. I shall be looking at how we operate as a board. Three directors currently combine board responsibilities with operational line management of teams. Interesting. So the three directors combine board responsibilities with operational responsibilities. Is this a weakness? What do you think? The three directors currently combine their board responsibility with operational line management. Is this a weakness, I think? You agree? Okay, should this be changed? Okay. This is a model which we have had since we started, but it may not be appropriate anymore. Makes sense that when they were small, it was okay that the director can do the board responsibility as well as manage teams. But now since they are growing and they want to uh, obtain full listing, then it may not be appropriate. I also want to, so this is one weakness, okay? I also want to look at the way TT4U is structured as a whole. I think we ought to be much more of a matrix organization. Yeah, I think we covered that in the previous portion. We need to be considering the data. Okay, so this point is about data. We need to be considering the current state of relationship with with uh, clients as an agenda item every board meeting. So the board now wants to have uh, clients as an agenda every board meeting. We have to develop key performance indicators beyond clients gained and lost each period so that we have a better idea of how we are performing in the areas, blah, blah, blah. So the board wants to see this extra information. Do you agree? The board wants to see some specific client related KPIs in every board meeting. Information supplied. We need to add that, you know, they need the board should see this. What about this one? We must also consider how we are perceived in relation to our competitors, although we do have a regular report on competitors offering but still doesn't tell us blah 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 so i think this is something 
which the board is also looking for in the next me regular meetings. So these two points uh, pertains to this one, information supplied to the board, changes required to the information supplied. And the, this one refers to what is the marks for all this so that I can decide the number of points. Marks is, uh, ah, how many points? 10, 13 divided by two, six to seven. So I have got uh, two points for here. So I need to give four more points for the board. So let's look at the current board structure. Let's look at the current board structure, which is exhibit introduction. Aha. The four consultants who initially founded the company remain on the board in key executive roles. Now the chairman and non-executive director, they have a chairman who is a NED, NED is good. And his background, he was appointed two years ago. He's a partner in a large law firm. Then there is a CEO, original founder. Then there is a services director. He's original founder and he also leads the team for smaller business. Then there is a marketing director, but he also leads the team for larger business. Then there is a IT director, but he also leads the team for public sector team. Do you spot any problem from in this point, in this portion? Do you think they are doing dual roles? Like, for example, the marketing director. What's his designation? Marketing director. What is a marketing director supposed to do? What is a marketing director supposed to do? He's supposed to focus on the marketing activities of all our products right that's his primary job but it probably in addition to being the marketing director he's also spending time leading the large business team so so he's doing two roles he's doing the marketing role for the entire company and he's also leading a large business team I don't think he will be able to do justice, right? Half one leg there, one leg here. Similarly, the IT director, his job is to be lead the technological innovations, technological issues, manage those things. But in addition to that, he's also leading the public sector team. The services director, his job is to make sure that client services is immaculate. It's perfect. But because probably he's focusing more on other things, client's feedback is really poor. So the point here, what's my point? What am I trying to say here? Can anybody tell me? What's the weakness? <sighs> Explain to me the weakness. Yes, they are doing dual role. They are being direct. Oh, come on, don't talk. Like an auditor, no segregation of duties. You talk like auditors or accountants, no segregation of duty. Is that the problem? My God. So, okay. So that dual role, one is one problem. What about the finance director appointed four years ago? Nothing wrong with that. I'm happy. That's no nothing wrong. He's a then there is one non-executive director appointed two years ago, former partner of a large accountancy firm. So, 
are you able to spot any issues with non executive directors what do you think is there anything wrong with only two neds okay only one no there are two neds there are two neds so should so what's wrong with two when you are saying only two what's wrong with two they are insufficient right so neds are generally like 50 50 generally the rule of thumb is they should have equal voting or equal say so right now how many executive directors are there how many executive directors one two three four five and two non-executive so it's a board of seven people out of which five is executive and two are non-executive so i think we, should, we need to add um the number of NEDs for sure it should at least be 40 to 50 percent of the board right so that's one point changes to the board the first change is that we need to add more NEDs or we can start by saying that the currently there are only two NEDs uh, out of a board of seven and we need to add more number of NEDs so that they have equal uh, voting rights and say in the business. Agreed? What is another thing wrong with NEDs? One is the quantity. No familiarity. What are you saying, familiarity? diversity ah surya surya is very good you guys have zero knowledge conceptually you are weak theoretically you are weak yes adil very good background ibrahim very good background no it background good good gender Bahadur? Bahadur, how do you know the gender? Is, is the gender mentioned here? When you are saying gender diversity, you know their genders? Stupid. Come on, man. Talk like a mature person. <laughs> no, Prince. You are wrong. Anyways. The NEDs, if you look at the NEDs, one is a lawyer, he's a partner in a large law firm, so he's a lawyer. And one is a former partner of a large accounting firm, so he's an accountant or an auditor. Which is good, there's no harm, but don't you think that at least one or two NEDs should be from IT industry? So that they can share their experience, their ideas, the what's happening in the IT world. I don't expect these lawyers and accountants to share IT related ideas. It's not their field. So I think that there's a big gap. The NEDs, while there is no harm in having law or accounting, it's it's they give some different perspective. But on simultaneously, we must have one or two NEDs from the industry in which we are operating so that, you know, they understand the technicalities. No? Yeah. All right. So let's, so two weaknesses on NEDs. Number one, it is the NEDs quantity is insufficient. And number two, uh, the, the NEDs, the current NEDs, they do not have any IT background or experience. So we must add. So 
if we are telling them to add more NEDs, then it's better that this time they hire someone from the IT industry, right? Okay, and then there is dual role. So three points from here, two points from here, five points. Any questions? Do you want me to draft this or you can draft it now? Are you in a position to draft it now? You understand how to draft? You want to attempt it yourself or do you want me to draft? No board committees. Yes, that could be a point. Uh, board committees are generally required for listed companies. But yes, you can suggest that for them to be if they want to prepare themselves for listed company, then they should have board committees. OK, that's a good idea that please can you draft one point, for example? Very good. Yeah, that's a good idea. I will draft. Uh, one point and then. You can draft uh, at the same using the same approach, but first let's all of you make the format. What's the format required? Prepare briefing notes, which advises the board of the changes. Please prepare briefing note right now with me. Time starts now. Briefing notes. Okay. My format is done. Please compare. OK, take 30 more seconds and then I will discuss.
Okay, briefing notes to the board of directors from stuff feed consultant, subject board of directors, or changes to the board of directors, whatever date is this. This briefing note advise the board on the changes required to the membership. Blah, 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 blah. Two broad headings membership and information because the question has two components, followed by the closure. Let me pick some points. Uh, let me pick this up. Okay, membership of the board, the first issue. Currently, three directors combine board responsibilities with operational line management of teams. Who are these directors? Can we give example? For example, the services director, or let's say the marketing director, is also heading the team for larger business. What's wrong in this? What's wrong in this? If they are heading, uh, it, first thing, it may not be appropriate anymore because it's, we are growing. And secondly, uh, dual role, he will not be able to focus. Uh, due to this dual role, the marketing director may not be able to uh, focus on each role properly. As T for you grows, this structure may not be appropriate. Hence, more executive directors should be added to the board who can take or share responsibilities. Is that okay? Done. Similarly, another weakness would be that currently there are only two NEDs on the board of director. This represents how much percentage? How much percentage? Um, two divided by seven. Twenty-eight. This represents twenty-nine percent of the full board. This is on the lower side. Ideally, the number of NEDs should be 40 to 50 percent. Hence, TT4U needs to add. more any d's on the board class third one the two current any d's are from lawyer and accounting backgrounds there is no any d having IT experience, IT background. Uh, 
uh, and or what's wrong with IT? Having uh, TT for you should add NEDs with IT background so that they can share their experience and knowledge to help the business grow. Tell us. We can also want to add that once the once there are sufficient number of EDs and NEDs, then PT or you may consider having board committees such as risk committee, audit committee, etc. Perfect answer. Love you. So simple. Questions, please. Yes, Hamza, yes. Yes, Susanna, that's also for, uh, fine. But do you understand how you can simplify stuff? Stick to the information in the exhibit. Explain that. Explain the impact and move on. Similarly, for information of the board, you can have these two points. Uh, you can kind of put this uh, two points here. One is the client uh, data. One is the data on competitors. And done. Closure. You, I want you to draft this yourself later on. Any questions? Yes, Jitesh, because we don't have any other information. Sir, CEO and Chairman, what's wrong with CEO and Chairman? Jagdish, what are you trying to ask? Can I write BOD? Must be 50% of NED? Yes, okay. Dual role? No. There is no dual role. There's a separate chairman and a separate CEO. Why do you say it's a dual role? Can we use KIST mnemonic on such requirement? Knowledge, uh, yes, you can, but NED may also be included. Okay. Did you feel that this part was easier and faster? You guys look relatively relaxed in this part as compared to the first question. Is that correct? That's because now you are getting used to the technique. This part was not easy. Mind you, this part was not easy. This part was not easy. But probably because now you are repeating that technique, understanding the approach, you're getting more settled down. Right? This is the power of practice. Imagine you do at least five to six SBL questions like this. Your confidence will go up. Your drafting skill will improve. You will know what to do, what not to do. This is your first question and the most difficult question. Imagine if it is well, if it is your fifth question and a probably a not that difficult question, you would have performed much better, all right? Look at the format. I am a guy of format, okay? Look at how beautiful this is, wow, 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 wow. Right, last question. How much time we have? 45 minutes, perfect. 
yes if the generally i have seen that if the case study is difficult the examiner does adopt a lenient marking g test do not complicate um, your life my friend keep it simple flat structure this and that i will share the this word document tomorrow once we've done i will share this uh, draft answer once we are done right okay guys let's move to the last question question number 1c i am really honestly tired because of in the morning i am in office and now i am with you guys 1c are you there 1c it says prepare a confidential email for the ceo which advises on the actions which tt for you can take to ensure that the controls on the confidentiality of data operate effectively and discuss the risks and ethical issues relating to communicating the threat to the client risk investment investment 15 marks oof and professional marks are for skepticism skills in challenging the views of the marketing director we need to challenge his views three marks so we need to advise on the actions to take to ensure controls on safety of data and risk and ethical issues communicating the threat let's look at our referencing do we have anything in 1c this one okay so 1c it says exhibit 5 we have to read exhibit 5 it is a 1 is to 1 i think and it says i've been spending a lot of time dealing with rex investment which as you know is a very difficult client okay so rex investment is a very difficult client stress word and we have to do it exhibit 5 then we can understand this so let's go to exhibit 5 but let's can we quickly make the format first so that whatever we copy we can copy paste under the right thing confidential email please make a confidential email a quick formatting para 3 
sheep from the world. All right, I am done. Please check. Can you check my format and give me marks? Confidential email. Okay, oh, oh, I need to write here as well. This. Okay. To the board of directors from stuff field, data confidentiality, date, opening paragraph. I copied, uh, pasted from the requirements, and then I gave these two broad headings because the question is divided into these two broad things. Actions on data confidentiality, risk and ethical issues. Uh, where can we use, uh, we need to uh, read exhibit five. Where can we use this line? I think here, I'll just put it here for the time being under risk and ethical issues. Let's read exhibit five now. Okay, small exhibit, please start reading and wherever you feel you can use some information, feel free to copy paste on your Word document time starts now. Largest client, oops. Interesting. I'm done. You guys can have 30 more seconds. And if you are done, please type done. Okay, uh, I will change the email is to be the CEO, right? Okay, my mistake. Please type done if you are done.
10 more seconds. So, a very interesting scenario. So, think that you are the board of directors. Think like that you are the CFO, right? Think maturely. What's happened? That uh, we have uh, received an anonymous letter, a threat to reveal confidential data of Rex investment unless we pay $20,000. Oof. And it looks like the you know they are not bullshitting because they have shared some sample data and it's quite detailed. So it most probably looks like there's a hacking and uh, there is a data security breach, and we have lost our uh, the data of one of our, one of our largest client has been stolen. Confidential data of our largest client has been stolen. Now, these guys are saying that we must have the necessary controls. He says, yes, I am confident. Now, this guy has, this paragraph is very important. Do you remember the skepticism, Marx? Skepticism. It was about... Uh, we have to challenge the views of the marketing director, three marks. So what is this guy saying? He says, then we don't need to pursue this further. Whoever is making the threats didn't get the information from us. Of course, we have complete and full functioning controls. The one thing I'd say is that we shouldn't tell Rex about this. As you know, they are our largest client. Relations with them are difficult enough and at present. If we tell them, it shows that we don't believe our systems are secure. It will give them a very good reason to terminate our contract. Do you agree with this approach? If you are asked to be skeptical, would you be able to challenge or disagree or share your view that sorry i don't agree with you i think it or you can ask questions you can tell me yes would you be able to uh, challenge so this, for example, it says that we don't need to pursue this further. Whoever is making the threat did get the information from us. Of course, we have complete functioning controls. Can you ask a question here? Can you ask a question here? He's saying, of course, we have complete and fully functioning controls. What question comes to you, Ma? Very good, Teresa. How do you know? How can you claim this? If he's saying we have complete and fully functioning control, he's the marketing director. So I would say, oh, yeah, right. How do you know that? Have you done any testing? Have you done any audit? When was the last time our security review has been done? How can you be so sure? It's not his field of expertise. Yes. So, I mean, you can challenge it, right? That how are you, how do you, how are you so sure that we have fully functioning and secure controls? And let him answer. Uh, and what about this? He's saying that we shouldn't tell Rex investment. They are our largest clients. Relation is difficult. If we tell, so let's copy this entire thing. Hmm? Control C. I will go to the Word document. I will first paste this thing. And uh, 
this portion will have to go here risk and ethical issues relating to so now let's read the requirement advice on the actions with tt for you can take to ensure that the controls on the confidentiality of data operate effectively and discuss the risks and ethical issues so can anybody tell me what are the controls which are used to secure the data any ideas that if i want to protect my data if i'm a bank hmm, you think there is appropriate control so what are those controls can you recommend or give me examples of few controls which are absolutely necessary to protect your data confidentiality passwords very good firewalls very good encryption very good otp what is otp sayed ali very good otp i like two factor authentication that is otp yes firewalls firewalls two factor physical control regular security updates one time password what what is one time password system auto lock after three passwords very good password should be case sensitive backup what about ah very good anusha audit logs what is audit logs anusha i would like to understand audit logs regular changing of passwords restricted assets uh, access logs what is logs tuba what is audit trail and logs and very good insurance of lost data amir please is this a control you always think like an accountant amir i'm really worried about you you think the insurance is a control it's not how will it protect your data all right anyways now let's so the first thing is we have to make sure that the password so i have a in my presentation uh, there is a small list theoretical list. So these are the security controls strong password that's very important that strong password management and when we say strong password management these are the things alpha numeric change regularly one time password it is also called two factor authentication that you receive a code on your mobile like you know when you use your credit card or when you change your uh, facebook account or whatsapp uh, that's a handset you receive a code right do not write or share passwords system should lock down and then they, you should have backups there must be firewall so what is a firewall firewall are specialized protection softwares uh, which protects you from hacking okay it's anti hacking software and there has to be a system log and audit trails can anybody tell me what is a system log or audit trail that's a very important control a system log or a audit trail is basically uh the system keeps a record of who is logging which user id has logged in at what time what activities that person or user id did and when did it log out so if i want to investigate any fraud if i am the cfo 
and uh, if I want to investigate a fraud in the system, the first thing I will ask for is bring me the audit trail or the system log. We will study the system log to see who has logged in, any unusual person, any unusual timing, or what activity has been done, who has downloaded the data, which IP through which IP connections are there. System logs and audit trail will help you investigate who has done the mischief. Very important. And then antivirus, segregation of duties, all these are IT security controls. In case of TT for you, I would definitely say uh, strong password management has to be there. So if I want to, uh, if I'm the director in TT for you, I will ask that do we have strong password management? Do people regularly change their password? Is there a two-factor authentication in place? Is the password alpha, numeric, character, whatever, blah, blah, blah? Then I would say, can we check the system log and audit trails to identify how, when, what has happened? Do we have sufficient powerful firewalls. You know, because there's a skepticism skill, I have to ask these questions. You understand? So part A is okay. You're okay with that? Uh, do you want me to draft to one point and the rest you can draft? Okay, so let's see. You guys will help me. I need some help. Uh, where is this? Is this one? So we will say benefits. No, where is this? Where is the one C here? We will say that then we don't need the for whoever is making the threats didn't get the information from us. So we are writing a confidential email to the CEO in which we have to disagree with the marketing director, right? We will say that. I would tend to disagree with a marketing director's views. He seems quite sure that the data leakage was not from us and that we have complete and fully functioning controls. I am not sure how he or I would like to know. Like to know. On what basis he is so sure we will need to do a thorough review of the IT security, IT slash data security controls. For example, do we have strong 
password management procedures in place are the employees required to change password regularly thus is there to factor authentication otp also we can review the system log and audit trail to investigate whether the data leakage was from our side we must also have firewalls in place also backup arrangements and segregation of duties should be there lastly i think we should uh, undertake uh, it security audit through an external consultant so that we can so that we can have some assurance regarding our data security controls single line two line simple basic discussion because you are under immense time management pressure but you did you see i'm because it's skepticism did i ask some questions how many question marks you can see you one two three four five question marks did you see the word disagree yes and did you see the keywords like passwords otps firewalls audit trails yes they're all there perfect answer questions yes this is the full answer amina what else you want Sir, the question is about actions, and we have written the actions as an example, not as a main body. It's okay. It's okay. This is the full answer. Yes. I will share it the file tomorrow when we complete. You know, but what I'm trying to tell you is make it simple. Otherwise, you will not be able to complete in four hours. Can I write more? Yes, I can write more. Can I write more? Yes. But I'm deliberately telling you to write less because I want you to complete on time. At least try this as a starter. If you are able to complete this on time, then you can write a little bit more. But if you are still not completing in time, then this is enough. Uh, Mahima, uh, hiding from Rex investment is the second part. I have not come there. We should we should use you instead of we. I used we. Did I use we? No, 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 no. Uh, let me look at the. Uh, where is the requirement? Where is the requirement? Okay, yes, my mistake. I should not use V. I, I thought I was the finance director. 
my mistake. You know, my mind works like the CFO. Uh, yes, I, I, my role is external, so I should use a third, third person. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Now this part, risk and ethical issues. So two things, risks. So should we tell or should we not tell? Should we inform risk investment or should we not inform risk investment? So the marketing director is saying we should not inform because they are our largest client we are not at fault we did not leak the data and then we should not tell uh, our largest clients it's difficult already and we will they will terminate our contract so what's the requirement discuss the risks and ethical issues relating to communicating the threat to the client should we inform or should we not inform? What's your view? Yes, you can, uh, Amir. I think we should inform. Well, what's the pros and cons? So if we don't inform, if we don't inform, what's the pros and cons? If we don't inform, then uh, maybe we will retain that client. They will remain our client, but it's unethical. And what if the client finds out, then they will sue us. Uh, litigation, penalties, reputational. And if we inform them, if we inform them, then there's a chance that we might still lose the client. However, if we inform them, it will be more ethical or maybe the client will appreciate that we inform them and then we can work together to identify and fix the problem. It's more about, so I think the disadvantages are, are more than the advantages, right? So we have to tell them. I think maximum we will lose revenue, but if we don't tell them it's unethical, the client may sue us, that why did you not inform us? Uh, reputational loss, so many things. So do you agree with marketing director's view? Again, you have to show some skepticism skill here. Uh, so this guy is saying, uh, uh, we, we will say, uh, we, you, I will disagree with marketing director because whatever he's suggesting, it seems unethical. If it is client's data, it's a leakage of client confidential data, then the client needs to know. It doesn't matter uh, from where the data was leaked. Maybe it was leaked by from the client side. I don't know, but at least we have to tell them so that we can try and control the damage. And do you remember Myobed? Do you remember Myobed? <laughs> now you read there's something there on ethical and data focus and then if you want to score extra marks you can link 
to exit it. So you can say that even, you know, if you are planning to adopt myo bed, there is, a, it requires us to be ethical, which means that we have to be fair, honest, transparent, and we have to be data focused like tight security. If you link this exhibit with that answer, you will get extra one or two marks because the examiner loves when students, they connect more than one exhibit. When I repeat, the examiner really loves when students, they try to connect two exhibits together in the answer. It shows to the examiner that you have read the case, you understand, and you are building your case by connecting two exhibits. So try and develop this skill of connecting two exhibits. That is why I had mentioned here that I will keep this in mind. So if you go back and refer to the myobed approach, examiner will give you two extra marks. Uh, 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 wait a second, guys. Okay, guys. So you think uh, today's session, I felt that your confidence was much higher as compared to yesterday. Yesterday was the first day of your practice. So you are kind of absorbing so much. Today was the second day. I, I distinctly felt you guys were more relaxed, more confident, and more participating. Tomorrow, inshallah, you will be two steps more better. So now you understand the power of practice. Yes, no. Yeah. Now, did you do you think that uh, this approach, uh, this practice thing, uh, let me uh, this solving this question like this, discussing the exhibits, copy pasting, referencing, drafting. Do you think it's helpful to you from your exam point of view? Did you learn a lot? It's not about syllabus or knowledge. You will see that I am not talking about knowledge or content or syllabus or technical skill. I'm just focusing on linking, drafting, common sense logics. Think like a, think like a, think like a, CFO. That's the mindset which I want you to have when you enter the exam hall. You feel like a CFO and you talk and you help like a CFO. Right. So what I want is, so if you feel that uh, uh, this kind of approach is helping you, uh, so just as a reminder that right after we finish our webinar, which is tomorrow is the last day, uh, I will be starting my mock-based practice classes from 17th of Feb. It will be exactly like this. In fact, more detailed um, because uh, in the webinar, I have some time constraints. They do not allow me to give more hours, right? But in the webinar, in my own mock classes, I have no time limitation. So we will be like doing four or maybe five SBL questions other than this in the same manner. After that, two mocks, I will take two mocks. And out of that, I will check one mock with feedback. So please, guys, if you feel that this kind of session was helpful for you, so please enroll in the mock based. I honestly feel uh, that it will really help you. Okay, if you're interested in details, 
I think the price is uh, uh, $90 for all of this thing. And for students who are based in Pakistan, uh, the local currency is rupees, Pakistan rupees 12,000, right? For details, please message on this number because we are taking, we will close, uh, we will close the admission soon. That's the detail and that's the schedule of the classes. It will be held 8 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. How many hours? 8, 9, 10, 11, three and a half hours, maybe four hours per day. And that's the schedule. Right, guys. So do I have any questions before I sign off? Yes, so the, this time, you know, the webinar is for four days. Uh, instead of five days, I was, I don't know, it's it's ACCA Pakistan's decision for all subject. Uh, they reduced the, the webinar to four days. Uh, because, you know, uh, I don't know why. And I feel it's not sufficient, but anyways. Tomorrow we will, tomorrow is the last day, okay? So tomorrow uh, we will do the remaining question, which I think is question number two. Is it question number two? I think we did question number one. Yeah, tomorrow we'll do this in the first half. And in the second half, we will then talk about some important topics, articles, syllabus change, the study plan and all those things. And I will take lots of questions. Right, guys. So if you guys are OK, we can sign off. I will see you guys tomorrow, yeah? All right, guys. So please take good care, and I will see you all tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>